Okay, one of the last types of inequalities I want to talk about is solving an absolute value inequality. All right, and I've stacked this lecture full of a couple examples so you guys can really understand that there's two basic rules we need to follow. So let's go back to um, one slide from the absolute value equation lecture, and that is talking about absolute value as distance. Now, before when we had the equation, we only dealt with the actual distance of 3 and negative 3. All right, but now what about the space in between these blue, blue dots on our, on our number line? Well, this gray area here, okay, in between the negative 3 and the 3, that relates to the absolute value of x less than 3, meaning x is between, so between negative 3 and 3. All right? What about the green, or what you'll hear me say sometimes as the outside rays? This is absolute value of x greater than 3, meaning x can be greater than 3 or x is less than 3. Why? Because look at these two outside pieces. They are further away. The distance would be greater than any distance between 3 or negative 3 and 0. Okay. All right, so let's think about two rules for solving correctly. All right, so if we're given in number one here the solutions of absolute value less than b, those are going to be the numbers that satisfy everything between negative b and b. And so I'm setting up a compound or three-part inequality. However, let me grab my pen again here. However, if I'm given absolute value of a greater than b, then I set up two separate inequalities, a less than negative b or a greater than b. And it's going to help you guys maybe if you go through this lecture a couple times and really think about trying to visualize the number line, all right, and what we're seeing here in terms of distance. All right, so again, let me just say it one more time a slightly different way. When is the distance less than a number? Well, when a sits in between that distance on the positive and negative side. When is a distance going to be greater than a number? Well, when a is greater than that distance, and then when a is less than the negative distance. Okay, how do you solve an absolute value inequality? All right, here comes our recipe. If necessary, isolate the absolute value on one side. So get the absolute value by itself if I stick some stuff around it. Write either a three-part or compound inequality or two separate inequalities based on the previous slide. All right, so if it's less than, we're going to do the three-part inequality. If it's greater than, we're going to do two separate inequalities. All right, and then we just solve those two inequalities, just like we did in the previous lecture on linear inequalities. Step three, we're going to get variable terms on one side and constant terms on the other. We're going to isolate the variable and then solve and then we're going to graph the solution set on a number line. All right, and then lastly, just like we did before, we're going to use the graph to either write our solution set in set builder or interval notation. All right, let's get to the examples. Okay, let's solve the absolute value of x minus 2 less than 5. Well, you guys, it's less than, so what does that mean? That means a three-part or compound inequality. All right, and so I have negative 5 less than x minus 2 less than 5. All right, and hopefully you know by now from that example, how do we solve that? Well, I'm adding 2 to each piece, and that was a 2, and adding 2, and that's how we get negative 3 less than x less than 7. So that's going to be the numbers between negative 3 and 7, okay? And you can see there with my parentheses then on the negative 3 and the 7. Okay, wow, it gets a little bit more complicated every time, doesn't it? All right, let's talk about this one. All right, we have ne this negative 3. All right, let's start with this piece right here. What do we want to do? Well, first, we want to subtract 20 from both sides. Okay, after subtracting 20 from both sides, I get the negative 3 times our absolute value greater than or equal to negative 39. 
All right, well, I need to move that negative 3. How am I going to do that? By division. Now, big key right here, right here, do not forget to flip the inequality when dividing by negative 3. So when I divide by negative 3, yes, I get positive 13 over here, but it flips my inequality. Now I have an absolute value less than or equal to 13. So because it's less than or equal to, I write my compound or three-part inequality, and then I just need to solve that. I add 2 to all three sides, and then I need to divide all three sides by 5, and I get negative 11 fifths less than or equal to x less than or equal to 3. All right, and that is a bracket. Let me grab my pen again so you guys know what I'm talking about. That gives a bracket on the negative 11 fifths and a bracket on the 3, and you can see I did that with the number line as well. Okay, solve and graph the solution set on a number line. All right, so we have absolute value greater than 18. Well, absolute value greater than 18 means I have to write two separate inequalities. All right, I have my positive, just as I read it, 6 minus 3x greater than 18. Then when I make the 18 negative, I also have to flip the inequality. So I have 6 minus 3x less than negative 18 and 6 minus 3x greater than positive 18. All right, how am I going to go about solving this? Well, first I'm going to subtract 6. Let's see here. Subtract 6 from both sides. All right. That gives me negative 3x less than 24. Divide both sides by, wow, this is great animation. Ooh, let's divide now. Let me show you with my pen where I'm at. Okay, so I'm right here. We're going to divide both sides by negative 3. And since I'm dividing by the negative 3, I have to flip the inequality. And so I end up with x greater than 8. All right, that's one. Now I come back over here to the positive side where I have subtracted six from both sides. Now I am dividing both sides by negative three. Okay, so I'm right here. Again, because I'm dividing by the negative number, I have to flip the inequality and I end up with x less than negative four. And let's actually go back for just a second. Okay, let's talk a little bit about this one. Okay, I want to show you with the pen what I mean by this. So we have x greater than 8. That puts a parentheses, and that an amazing parentheses, and I shade everything greater than 8. And then x less than negative 4 puts a parentheses on the negative 4, and I shade everything literally, like the whole screen, I shade everything to the left of negative 4. Okay, now I want to talk a little bit about this. We have two separate solution sets. We have x less than negative 4, and we have x greater than 8. So that gives me negative infinity to negative 4, and then please, guys, pay attention to this, this little U cup right here. All right, U stands for union, okay, and in, in set that means or. So my solution is less than negative 4, or it's greater than 8. And so this is the math notation for saying or. Again, that U stands for union. I need to union these two intervals.